This video will show you how to install a Chemtrack TC007 turbidity meter. Before installation, it is important to confirm the contents of the system delivered and that it matches what has been ordered and meets the necessary process specifications. Start by confirming the items received match the items listed on the packing list. The first item to confirm is the analyzer. The part number of the analyzer is located on the side of the enclosure. The second item to confirm is the measurement cell. The part number of the measurement cell is etched on the front of the product. The third item to confirm are the fiber optic cables that link the analyzer to the measurement cell. Be sure to check the length and quantity of fibers received match what has been ordered. The system delivered will also contain a package of important documents. The first document is a 2.1 order compliance certificate. This is a statement of compliance with the order by the manufacturer. The second documents are 3.1 material certificates that declares the metallic products are in compliance with the order requirements. The third document is a pressure test certificate. The Chemtrack TC007 turbidity meter comes complete with a factory calibration which is documented in the calibration certificate and a declaration of conformity. The order is complete with a hardcover installation and operation manual. The next stage will be to assemble the system. The order shown on this training video comes with an optional polycarbonate display stand that allows ease of use on a benchtop environment. We will begin by attaching this to the analyzer enclosure. Open the analyzer enclosure using the key included and we will begin by familiarizing ourselves with the various components of the analyzer. The power supply unit is located on the left side and is available in two models. The sensor card is what performs the optical measurements. The high performance LED light source is located to the right. There is one photodiode detector monitoring scattered light and a second reference detector that monitors attenuated light. The computer is mounted on the front door of the analyzer. The internet and Modbus connector is also located here. The high voltage connections are protected by a clear cover that must first be removed. The power connector is located under the relay output connections. Remove these connectors first to gain access. Feed the power cable through the cable gland located on the bottom left of the analyzer enclosure. Connect the power cables to the connector and the earth wire to the rail. Replace the protective cover. Firmly fasten the cable gland and check that protective covers are in place on all the unused cable glands. If the internet or Modbus connection is required, install this next. Fiber optic cables will be installed next. Labels on the analyzer will clearly show where these should be connected. 
Start by removing the protective dust caps, then install the fiber optics as shown. While all three fiber optic cables are the same type and length, it is necessary to connect them in the order indicated to ensure the integrity of the factory calibration. The fiber optic marked LED is connected to the LED housing. The fiber optic marked ATT is connected to the attenuated light detector. The fiber optic marked SCA is connected to the scattered light detector. Close and lock the analyzer enclosure. It is important to ensure that all the cable glands are firmly and tightly fastened to the fiber optic cables. Now we are going to connect the fiber optic cables to the measurement cell. The sapphire glass windows are protected by the metal measurement ports that protrude into the flow of sample. The port at 90 degrees is what is measuring the scattered light, while the port directly facing the light is used for reference. Start by removing a cable gland. You will notice small bags of moisture absorbing desiccate inside the measurement cell. These are used to prevent condensation and should not be removed unless operating at high temperatures. Connect the fiber marked LED to one of the two ports facing one another. Hand tighten the fiber optic connector to the measurement cell, then use a pair of long nose pliers to assure the fitting is firmly attached. The cable glands on the measurement cell should be firmly and tightly fastened using a spanner. When tightened, there should be no gap visible between the cable gland sealing element and the fiber optic cable. The fiber marked ATT should be connected directly opposite to the cable marked LED. The fiber marked SCA should be connected to the measurement port located at 90 degrees to the other ports. The installation of the analyzer is almost complete. It is now time to turn on the power to the analyzer. The instrument startup screen will ask for a few parameters that need configuring before use. Start by entering the date and time. Use the plus and minus keys to adjust the values. Tick to go to the next value. Then press tick for two seconds to confirm and X to return. Next select the required display language. Then the mains frequency. And finally, select exit and confirm to start using the analyzer.